So, last but not least, uh, we have Mauricio, who's joining us from Yellow Pages Group way up in Montreal, Canada. Mauricio has been an early adopter of DIRA, having star started 10 years ago. He's an avid speaker and most recently spoke at Agile 2014. Today, he's going to walk us through choosing the right process for your team. Mauricio? Thank you. Thank you, Grace. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. I did a version of this talk at the Walmart Labs, and it actually inspired some good questions from the organization there. So I'm hoping that it'll inspire some good uh, discussion in your organization as well. And so I'm here to help you answer the question, incremental or iterative development or agile, and which one is the right process for your team? And I'd like to start this thought process by uh, you thinking about software engineering and software engineering people and a software engineering mindset. And the reason I start there is I look at software engineering as a state of mind. And a state of mind in which, you know, it's people that look at the, the, developing that cool software that want to find that cool bug and generally want to develop that cool user experience that changes people's lives. Right? Software engineering really shouldn't be, you know, I, de I developed another line of code. I attended another demo. I ran another test, and of course, yay, we delivered that build to QA, right? Software engineering really should be something of a creative, a collaborative effort in people that get together and really want to develop that software that changes people's lives. Now, if you got people on the team like that, you got people that want to deliver real quality software, and you have the makings of a much more mature software engineering team. And the reason I'm talking about maturity is because the maturity will determine which process you should deploy at your pro in, in your organization. But before we get to the process, let's talk about the tools. The tools actually are key to helping deploy your process. If you don't pick the right tools, it will affect how your process gets deployed and if there's a failure or a success in that deployment. So I've been, these are the tools that we use at YP Canada. So we use everything from Jira, Jira Agile, down to Confluence, Team Calendars, and all the way down to Code Reviews and Stash. And I've been using Jira for like 10 years. I was really one of the early adopters. I still remember version 2 point something. So if you don't pick the right tools, what happens? Well, people will start to use the tool usage as an excuse. And they'll say, well, your tools don't allow me to do this, and your tools don't allow me to do that. And all of a sudden, your tools become the excuse not to use your process. So the usage of the right tools is key in your process deployment. <coughs> Make sure you pick tools that can handle any process, incremental or iterative or agile, either one. Your tools has to be able to handle either one. So I like to say that the IID, or incremental and iterative development option, is hidden in the Jira Agile Labs the option that lets you run sprints simultaneously. And you'll see in a minute why I find that that's the IID option. So a little history on IID. I've talked about it. You guys probably don't know about it. And it really started back in the 1920s and 30s. It's a long time ago with Mr. Schuart, which is really the guru of quality. And he's the one that suggested that iterative process you see on the right, where you want to plan something, you'd actually do it, you study how you did, you decide if you have to change something, you act on those changes, and you iterate. And he's really the grandfather of that iterative process. He had a couple of people he influenced, Mr. Deming and Mr. Wodan, and the three of them are really the gurus of the quality movement out of the 20th century. The first usage of IID was actually in a hardware project, the development of the X-15 back in 1950, and it was the first manned rocket to break the atmosphere of Earth. That was used on the first software project in the late 1950s for Project Mercury, which was really the beginning of the space race. And they used a concept there that we call today extreme programming. So some people will debate and say that IID is the foundation of Agile. But we're not here to debate that today. So let me give you my definition of IID. IID, in my mind, a typical example of a release will, look, will start with X weeks of increments, followed by at least two iterations. 
and it's typically between a six to a 12 week process. So I'm talking about increments and iterations. What's the difference? Increments are the brand new code that you're promising to deliver in a release. It's the new features you're gonna develop. The iterations, you're, you will iterate on, th on features that you may not have understood the right requirement, and you may be refactoring that requirement. So a typical release might look something like this. You start with three increments, in which that's when you're gonna work on the new stuff. Then you'll have a phase gate called feature complete. Some people call it code complete. And then that follows iterations in which you're refactoring some of those requirements that were misunderstood. You have another phase gate called code freeze. You might have another iteration to do a final uh, you know, regression test, and you ship that last golden build. So this is incremental and iterative development. And so the key features are that the increments do not go to production. Not all the testing is completed within the increment or iteration. And only the last golden iteration goes to production. So you might be looking at this saying, well, it sort of sounds like Agile, but it's actually not. And I'm not just playing semantics on this. And semantics, I find, is what sometimes gets people in trouble. So let's talk about semantics and what's in a word. And I'll talk about agility. This is the word that everybody's throwing around, right? That's the basic definition in the dictionary. You're able to move quickly and easily. And so the software executive will say, we got to do agility, right? But there's much more to agility than just speed and velocity. If you look at this course, what about balance? What about strength? What about endurance? Speed and velocity is important, but you need other dimensions to agility to get through the course. So getting back to that software executive, he says, well, I hear all the cool kids on the block are doing agile. So I got to do agile because I'm being pressured to release software. So the software executive, all he's hearing is speed and velocity. He's forgotten about all the other dimensions. He now demands of you, go out and put Agile into our organization. But he wants speed and velocity. So what happens with the speed and velocity? He ignores all the other dimensions of agility, and all of a sudden he's deployed an ad hoc process rather than an Agile process. So it's very important that everybody understands what's what it takes to put Agile into place. So it leads to many illusions and, ex and expectations of Agile. So the software executive now has ideas of what Agile will do for his organization. Here are some of the most common ones. It'll fix everything in our organization. All of our problems, Agile's the magic silver bullet. And you know what? Once we put in Agile, we'll deliver software instantaneously faster. It's just magical, right? Technical debt, what's that? After all, we're focused on delivering every sprint to production, right? We don't care about technical debt. Documentation, that's optional. After all, we're agile now. We don't need to do documentation. And my favorite, efficiency. Yes, when we put in agile, everything becomes much more efficient. That line of code that the developer has to write will magically write itself faster. Tested, well, it's gonna get tested faster because I'm doing agile. And yes, it, everything will come together and will be much more efficient. But reality is the efficiency comes from working on the right thing at the right time that delivers business value. That's where you get your efficiencies, right? And so it's not just semantics. It's important that people understand that agile actually requires a much higher level of software engineering maturity that most organizations don't realize. And so they'll go in with these expectations that Agile will just magically work. And so you're saying, well, what's the story? You know, you're talking about IAD, you're talking about Agile, sort of sounds similar. And you're right, there are some similarities. And there they are, they're listed. Two-week increments, two-week sprints, iteration planning, sprint planning, daily stand-ups, daily scrums, everybody starts at around the same time. And that's pretty much where the similarities end. There's many differences. The key difference is, IID focuses on delivering that last build to production, whereas in Agile, it's every build has to be production ready. So that is a key distinction and is a very different way of working in your teams. Now, that's not where the differences end. There's many differences here. I'm not gonna expect you to read that. I'm gonna focus on a few of them. I'd like you to take a picture of that. But there are many differences. 
And I want to help you go through some of these differences so you can answer the question, where, which process is right for your team? And I'm going to give you the political answer. It really depends. And it depends on many factors. And it depends on your teams. And you got to remember that you're implementing change. And change is always hard for people. We're creatures of habits as humans. And so whenever you're going to introduce change, there's many factors to consider. There's many hard factors, processes at the top. What about those company objectives? What about those structures? But what about all of those underlying soft factors? Power, fear, influence, just to mention a few. So you've got to remember all of this stuff that's going on as you're deciding to implement any process in your organization. And so sometimes what I say to organizations, you know, sometimes it's better to go one step at a time. You may want to start by doing incremental and iterative which is a more forgiving process than Agile is. And once you get good at being incremental and iterative, then make that jump to Agile. And I found this to work in a lot of the teams that I've dealt with over my experience. So let's ask yourself some basic questions. IID or Agile? We're going to go through a few basic ones together, and I hope I can answer, I help you answer that question. First, what does your resource commitment in your teams look like? Is it a bunch of people that get thrown together and the latest priority that came from the top? People work on it and then they dismantle? Or do you have a committed team that's focused to deliver that cool software? What about your office? What does it look like? Do you have a cubicle farm where it stifles communication and people just don't talk to one another? Or do you have an actual open space concept in which people can talk and share ideas? What about that virtual co-located team? You know, is it a bunch of people that are on the phone conference call after conference call? Or do you actually have a solution installed where you can do video and share ideas like Atlassian HipChat? And what about your product backlog? Is it an Excel sheet with a bunch of numbers and a bunch of list of item numbers? Or do you have that beautiful product backlog in a tool that you can share and is prioritized? What about testing? Do you do manual? and you think about automation, maybe when we have time down the road? Or is automation at the focus of your core strategy and starts with the unit testing from the developers and feeds up into the QA team? What roles do you have on your team? Do you have project managers or do you have scrum masters? Do you have product managers, business analysts? Or do you have that product owner that really wants to get in there and try the software? So we've asked all these questions, and you're, the question is, which process is right for your team? So if you saw yourself down the left side of this presentation, and chances are you're either doing IID or you're more of an IID organization. If you saw yourself down the right side, then you're probably more of an agile organization. Now, if you're sitting on the left side and you want to get to the right side, you're asking yourself, what do I need to do? I want to do agile scrum. What do I need to do? Start with getting buy-in from your C all the way down to into the team. You've got to get that buy-in. Don't try implementing a process if everybody doesn't commit to it. And then commit the resources to the project and co-locate them, whether it's virtually or physically. And don't touch those resources if you're going to do Agile Scrum. Next, get yourself a good trainer coach. Don't try to do Agile Scrum alone. Get a good trainer coach, get them into the building, and have them work with the team. Especially those first couple of sprints, the coach has to watch and make sure they're following it. Right? And then do story writing training. It's not natural for people. Some people have trouble doing story writing. They've got to get some training on that. And follow all the agile principles. Don't cut corners. You're either doing agile or you're not. And if you start to cut corners, you're only going to lead to an agile implementation failure. Lastly, get used to shipping frequently. People say, well, we got our builds production ready, but nobody thinks about actually putting them into production. And guess what? It does take some work to get it in. And the industry averages that one in four builds makes it to production. Lastly, let's talk about the Scrum Master. Who do you choose? Well, I have an IAD organization. I want to bring it to Agile. And people say, well, these are the roles I have. I have some PMs, some QA people, some developers, some BAs. And most organizations make the decision, well, I'm going to recycle my PMs into Scrum Masters. 
And guess what? If you have a PM that's only done PMing, most of the times that fails. And most of the time, Scrum Masters come better from the other teams. So before you decide who you're going to knight as your Scrum Master, think carefully about it. Choose the right Scrum Master, because if you don't, it will lead to a failure of your Agile implementation. So a little bit of a retrospective. What have we talked about? And I want to do this retrospective by talking about Paracelsus. He's the founder of toxicology. He's a guy that worked with chemicals. And he has a famous saying that says, the dose makes the poison. So imagine what he's trying to tell you is, if I mix chemicals in a certain way, I can actually cure someone. But if I mix them a little different, I can actually kill someone. So if you take this analogy and bring it to process deployment, if you don't pick the process that fits your organization's realities today, you're setting up a poisonous environment, a poisonous environment that will lead to an epic failure. So don't do that to yourselves. Pick the right process that fits your organizations today. And really, it all boils down to one question, do you do Agile or not? Can everyone in your organization commit to meeting all of the principles prescribed by the Agile Manifesto? If the answer to that question is yes, then you should do Agile. If the answer to that question is no, you should probably do IID. Some key takeaways for you, find that trainer coach. Find your Yoda, bring them in, and make them work with the team. It's a key to your success of your Agile implementation if that's what you want to do. Commit resources on staff to actually follow the process and have them be the owners of the tools. The tools and the process go together. And guess what? If there's a problem in the process, it'll show up in the tools first. So the people managing the tools will see it. So your process people need to manage your tools. And of course, the key person in the process, that scrum master. Find that amazing scrum master. He or she will make or break your agile implementation. And lastly, if you have a big enough organization, it is OK to have a softer development life cycle that actually includes IID teams and agile teams. But they're separate teams. But they can work in their own way. And that is a successful way of doing it. And I have actually found that research shows that IID projects are just as successful as agile projects. And there's statistics out there. If you want that research, I can give it to you afterwards. But whatever you do, commit. It's either an IID or Agile. Don't confuse your teams. Am I IID? Am I Agile? Am I Scrum Master? Am I Project Manager? What happens when people get confused? Then they fall back to their old work habits, and your Agile implementation fails. So all of that to say that if you pick the right process and tools at the right time, you'll have a happy collaborative team delivering high-quality software That'll make your company money. That's it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Maurizio. That was fantastic. Uh, we have time for one quick question, sure. which is on the screen right now, and I can read that out. How would you recommend introducing aspects of Agile to a team of programmers that have been operating in individual silos? So um, I have found that you got to have you got to make people learn about agile before you throw them in so don't start implementing a process before you show them the benefits and so the developers want to develop code so you're right they don't want to be sitting in meetings and iteration and scrum plan you know sprint planning so get them to understand agile first get them that training before you throw them in only then will it really work and you will always have the detractors but eventually they'll come over and they'll come along and they will uh, they will buy into it <laughs> 